sea levels are rising and the consequences could be huge. By the end of this century, areas that currently flood once every 100 years could start to flood several times every year. The rising sea is the sleeping giant of climate change. Climates may change, you might have more drought, you might have more rain, but I think for me the biggest issue, the biggest concern is what we'll see that will do in the coming centuries. Unfortunately, many of the mega cities in the world, and that also applies to the larger cities in Australia, has been built in low-lying areas. That means much of the world's population will eventually have to deal with sea level rise. The question is, how high will the waters get? Well, we go to the remote northwest of Australia and make a disturbing discovery. According to this geologist's work, sea levels could ultimately go up by a staggering nine metres. It's pretty high. I mean, that's going to displace nearly every megacity on the planet, just about. But before we go north, let's start the story in the south, in Tasmania. To get some background on sea levels, I caught up with Australia's expert, John Church. He's been in the business almost 20 years and has a critical eye. The reason when I first got into it was I thought the numbers that were being bandied about then were too large. And so I sat down and did my own calculations of what I thought. Even with his scepticism, John agrees we'll see significant sea level rise even this century. Evidence is unequivocal, I'd say. It's, it's very robust. Now, seas do rise and fall naturally, and by vast amounts. Go back, say, 25,000 years. People living here back then couldn't go for a nice stroll on the sand. 25,000 years ago, the coastline was about 10 kilometres that way because sea levels were 120 metres lower than they are today. The cause was the last ice age. Essentially, all the water was sucked out of the oceans and deposited in the polar regions as ice and essentially locked up. Indeed, the lower sea levels determined history. They've actually affected the human migrations from when we first walked out of Africa and lower sea levels allowed people to migrate far more easily. But the ice age eventually ended, 120 metres of ocean was returned and since then, we've had a long period of stability. Sea levels have been basically stable for many millennia. Civilizations have risen, civilizations have fallen, and the seas have hardly moved until the 19th century. They then started to rise. At Tasmania's Port Arthur, there's hard evidence for it. In the early years of this penal colony, in 1841, a high tide mark was accurately etched into the stone. That's one of the very first benchmarks made anywhere in the world. According to this mark, seas have risen here by 13 centimetres since then. 13 centimetres may not sound a lot, but it's enough to cause more frequent flooding at Port Arthur. And seas are still rising. Best estimates are sea levels are currently increasing at just over three millimetres a year. So at that rate, another Port arthur size rise will take 43 years. But as we'll find out, that three millimetres is set to grow. The cause is global warming. It's projected to heat the world by at least two degrees by the end of this century. How high could that cause the seas to get? Well, that takes us back to northwest Australia, to remote Quabba Station. Here, Mick O'Leary is estimating how high the seas got last time the Earth was two degrees warmer. That was 120,000 years ago, just before the last ice age. The way to do that is to identify the ancient coastline by looking for 120,000-year-old beaches. 
So this would have been the old beach here. That's correct. So we just look over over here. We can see a nice gently dipping slope of that bed to seaward, just as we get modern beaches slope to seaward. And we can even see contained within the sediments large shells, oh, yeah, large, I see that. Yeah. large coal fragments that would have been washed up from the fossil reef incorporated into the beach. This is a perfect example of a fossil beach right here. So the morphology and the bedding. This fossil beach almost looks like a modern one. But the sea never gets up here these days. It's many metres below us. So what causes the sea to rise? Turns out, melting ice is only part of the story. Almost half of the current rise is due to nothing more than global warming heating the oceans. Over 93% of the energy that's been absorbed by the climate system is stored in the oceans. Think of how a thermometer works when it's put in hot water. As the red liquid warms, it expands up the tube, allowing the precise temperature to be read off. Exactly the same with the oceans. As you warm the water, the water expands and it has nowhere to go except up, so sea level rises. But this relatively mild rise will ultimately be swamped if the world's two biggest ice sheets melt, Greenland and West Antarctica. Sea levels will then soar. Did these ice sheets melt last time the world was two degrees warmer? To find out, Mick needs to measure precisely the height of the ancient sea back then. One way to do that is to measure the height of the ancient corals, because they would have grown precisely to the old low tide mark. And he put me to work. Okay, so our location, you quite the location, yeah. is Red Bluff North. Red Bluff being the, the headland behind us. Okay, Red Bluff North. So this, this is probably the highest in situ coral we have for this section of reef. And we can write the species or the general type. So just put a cropper up. Okay. Yep. And now we want to work out the elevation. Okay, so right. I'm going to stand on the coral. And this will be about the highest point. The corals and... vary in height along the coast. And the aim is to find the highest because they will be the measure of ancient sea level. But there's a potential glitch with Mick's measurements. How do we know, rather than the seas moving, that the corals haven't moved over the years? There's no such thing as a stable coastline. Coastlines everywhere around the world are being deformed and warped and uplifted and subsided at various rates. Even a simple earthquake in the past could upset the measurements. Here, whole buildings have been sheared off to not even a centimetre high. Consider the one that caused the 2004 Boxing Day tsunami. There were corals which are living quite happily in the subtidal zone, and that event lifted these corals up out of that zone, maybe a metre in that one event, and they're all dry and dead now. To rule out, coral reef movement, Mick took measurements right along the West Australian coast, as well as at localities overseas like the Caribbean and South Africa. And we find that these shorelines are present at those localities at those same elevations. So his evidence is strong. Average sea levels were seven to nine metres higher when the earth was last two degrees warmer. That means much of Greenland and the West Antarctic ice sheets must have melted. Now, this doesn't mean as soon as the world is two degrees warmer, the seas will suddenly jump by nine metres. There'll be a time lag, because ice sheets take a long time to melt. The full nine metres would take many centuries. But even by the end of this century, seas could go up by one metre. That may not sound much, but remember, just 13 centimetres is capable of this. And even if you live high up, little things could change, like your beach lifestyle. The problem for some beaches is we've built roads and buildings right up to the edge. So that means as the sea levels rise and the sand gets washed away, the beaches could disappear completely. 
But one of the most disturbing things is that sea level rise will be relentless. In fact, there's a process that's going to be with us for many centuries and millennia, because once we've triggered this process, is the one process that has the largest uh, momentum. So we won't be able to stop that, that anytime soon. We could build higher seawalls, but this kind of protection is expensive. Assessments of the costs indicate that the cost will be much higher than we can afford even in the wealthiest countries. So the most clever uh, strategy is actually what is called a uh, planned retreat. Planned retreat means gradually moving our cities and infrastructure inland. And plans have already begun. Along parts of the Welsh coast, for instance, retreat will begin as early as 2025. And in Australia, we certainly won't escape the rising seas. Most of the cities in Australia, Melbourne, Brisbane, also Perth, have been built in what once were mangrove forests or salt marshes, and therefore there are areas that can be easily flooded. Because of the cost of retreat, why don't we just adopt a wait-and-see attitude? That's what we're doing at the moment, I'm afraid. <laughs> but that's putting many millions of people's lives and livelihood at risk. Whether we are persuaded by the solid weight of scientific evidence around climate change or whether we remain sceptic, it doesn't matter, our houses will be flooded. Sea level rise is at least gradual. So if we start acting, we do have time to make the necessary changes.